Mike, this may be the most intense rivalry in the entire IHL. These two cities just separated by an hour and a half up I-94. Twelve meetings between these two teams so far this year, six of them coming in the final month of the regular season. And then there's this that's been added into the fire, an ad that ran in two Chicago papers this week. The Milwaukee Admirals saying to Wolves fans that your team is slow, clumsy, and ugly. And not only that, the Wolves fans had better get out to the horizon this weekend and see their team play because if they don't see them this weekend, they may not get to see them again until next fall. Never a dull moment when the Admirals and the Wolves get together. Back to you. Well, thank you, JB. The power of positive thinking, I suppose, as we continue the IHL playoffs tonight, live right here on Fox Sports Net. Stephen Beauregard gets the start. familiar voices in the city of Chicago. Wayne Mesmer, now part of upper management here with the Chicago Wolves, a longtime fixture in the Chicago Stadium, singing the national anthem prior to Blackhawks games. Tonight he's got the Wolves on their mind, and so do we, as we are set for game two here on Fox Sports Net. And not a surprise at all that Danny Lorenz, the 28-year-old from Murrayville, British Columbia, once again gets the start for Al Sims's Milwaukee Admirals. Lorenz so far in the playoffs has been outstanding. He was not outstanding during the regular season, but he has certainly, as they say, picked it up a notch here in the postseason. And as Mike said, it's a good problem to have. Stephen Beauregard gets his second start of the playoffs. He has won eight of his last nine games overall after missing the entire month of March with a hand injury. Wendell Young may start game three. At this point, we do not know, but Wendell Young did get the win last night as he has been very impressive, allowing just three goals in his four games played so far here in the postseason. Tuttle on the four check. McNeil. And here comes Chicago. Pearson leaves it for Alexander Cimac. Cimac. Now it's Kravich looking to center. Pass was broken up. And here comes Milwaukee through the neutral zone across the line. It's Tom Lack. Tom Lack waiting. Lots of time. Shot. Score! Dean Trebojevic has put Milwaukee on the board. The Admirals lead one to nothing. He had all kinds of time. That is one thing you do not want to give anybody, especially in the playoffs, and that is time to pick their spot and put it where they want it. And Trebojevic just gets this nice pass across the slot, and he does a great job. Watch the Tom Black drive into the zone. He is looking. He is, his head is on a swivel, and the thing is, nobody picks up the late guy. Right there, driving through the zone. Everybody went to the far player on the other side, and Trebojevic was able to walk in, and then he went upstairs Keep in mind, Beauregard is a southpaw. He catches with his right hand, so that shot normally would go over a goaltender's glove hand, finds this vulnerable spot over the blocker on Stefan Beauregard. Well, Chicago struck first last night on a shorthanded goal by Tim Berglund, and Dean Trebojevic gets Milwaukee on the board first here this evening in Game 2. Seven seconds left on the penalty for interference against the Milwaukee Admirals' Christian Prue. Chicago yet to get a good scoring opportunity and an offsides will further their frustration here in the first period and trying to get quality scoring chances against Danny Lorenz. Well, you see some unique things from goaltenders. Look at this, the old drop kick. That is <laughs> not football, ladies and gentlemen. Well, that is a la three on three hockey after practice. <laughs> Kicks the field goal all the way down. That's a la Dominic Hasek. The Dominic Hasek is known for his innovations in goaltending. The way he is, he actually a lot of times bats the puck out of the air like a baseball player. Well, Danny Lorenz using the cushion of his goalie pad, and he just punts that one out of there. 
Well, as long as it works, I suppose. Well, Milwaukee has been forced to punt two times in two games. Oh, the long shot and a good save by Danny Lorenz. Is throwing forth is the fact that they're going to slow these guys down and really create traffic for them. And they have done so, created all kinds of traffic. And that slows a team like Chicago down, giving Milwaukee a good advantage. Artella's shot just trickles to the side. LaRouche slowed down literally by Mike Tomlin. Back the other way they come. McNeil has it, looked to center, broken up. LaRouche and Tom Lack continue to tug away as the linesmen come in to separate the two combatants as the second period has come to an end. Now Rodgers, Molte, and Sabrin have words behind the play. And Molte with a shove on Milwaukee's Steve Tuttle. So the Admirals are getting under the wolf skin. This will create frustration in the third period and as Milwaukee hopes, some more penalties and some more power plays for them. It's still a tight hockey game. Neither team can afford too many penalties as we've seen both teams at about a 40% ratio on the power play against each other in the seasonal series. So these guys know how to score against each other on the power plays. Another shot. That was Rogers who got a shot in on Ken Sabrin. And now these guys got to be careful because I'll tell you what, Rob Martel is standing right behind this. Now he's been a scrum and he's taking notes. He is taking notes. He's going to school. And in the third period, <laughs> yep. he's, not, he's not asking anybody for their phone number. I can guarantee you that. Got the little black book, but not the little black book you think it is. got not telling you we'll find out as we start the third period it's going to be an exciting third period no question about it you know the storyline for tonight was said early these two teams met 12 times in the regular season al sims in fact was almost the chicago head coach but now he says i'm an admiral through and through and i've gotten a distinct disliking for the chicago wolves and so do my players especially because of the 12 meetings in the regular season the rivalry continues in the third period. It is a one-goal game after 40 minutes of play. The Admirals lead the Chicago Wolves one to nothing. Two periods in the books. Welcome back to the Rosemont Horizon. One of the interesting things about the configuration of this building is the fact that the locker rooms are at the end of this hallway, and when the teams leave the ice and when they come back onto the ice, the teams are separated by only about 10 feet of cement. And when you have a period that ended the way the second period did, that leads to a lot of interesting conversation between the two teams. Unfortunately, we can't air it on a family program such as this. Let's go back upstairs to Mike and Mike. We talked about the shift a moment ago against Stephen Beauregard and the Chicago Wolves and dueling with the two high-flying forwards, Jeff Nelson and Brian Felsner. Here's well, another chance for Milwaukee, Kelly Fairchild. Well, Kelly Fairchild tries to feed it across the crease. Great play by Tom Dilly to get back into play and break that one up because it went right across the crease and it was Brent Peterson, a guy who knows how to put the puck in the net, waiting for it. Milwaukee turning offensive here in the third period. Kelly Fairchild, 22 goals in the regular season. Last year he was with the Orlando Solar Bears and he led them with six playoff goals in the postseason. Two centers out, two centers in. C-Mac now will get set to take the draw against Mike McNeil. Alexander C-Mac, 26 goals season for Chicago, Rose number 33. The former New Jersey Devil used to play on that line with Claude Lemieux. Now it is Don McSween skating down the loose puck. Bounces over the stick of Tilly. Tom Lack is in pursuit. Chicago will have a chance to clear again. The speedster Steve Martins has to stop. Gets it across. Back to Nardella now. Watch out for C-Max streaking down the wing. Deacon scores!
T-Max Mack left right down the wing, showing why it's such great speed and puck handling ability. What's a feed by Nardella? He'll pull up and then hit the streaking C-Mac who takes it off of his skate. That's one thing that Lorenz likes to do is use the poke check, and he's even blatant about it. He even gives you a look. Watch the goaltender with the poke check. He's already got his stick and to the top of the stick. C-Mac with a great stick handling ability. You can see that. He pulls it to his back backhand, and he fires it in the net on a forehand. And C-Mac with his first goal of the playoffs. He is the former captain of Dinamo Moscow, the Russian Alexander Seamac, who had eight goals in the regular season and 11 games played against Milwaukee. Has tied this playoff game at one. Blue jersey swarming, Stefan Beauregard. Well, he's known for his physical play, but Eric Fenton scored 20 goals in the regular season. He's had numerous opportunities in the postseason. Has not been able to capitalize yet. Dull. Clears for the Wolves. 50 seconds remaining on the penalty to Jamie Baker. Next whistle, Malte will come back on the ice. Nelson. Sapola has it. Jason Sapola circles at his own blue line. Marinucci right on him. Here's Martins to Marinucci. Deking in front goes high. He scores! A shorthanded goal for Chicago. Chris Marinucci has given the Wolves the lead. Second shorthanded goal in as many nights for Chicago. It's one of his strengths, the penalty kill. Sapola plays with it a little too long and gives him a two-on-one down quick into the zone. And actually, not only does he give the puck away, but by his sliding attempt, gets in the way of the goaltender and does not allow his own goaltender to get across the crease. So a double whammy, unfortunately, for Sapola. And Marinucci all of a sudden turns this game right around. Marinucci with three shorthanded goals in the regular season was one of a trio of players on Chicago to tally more than one shorthanded goal. Chicago leads two to one. C-Mac and Marinucci, the goal scorers. Marinucci's goal coming at 10-26. He was a star, and I mean star, at Minnesota Duluth. He gets the helper from Martins. He joined Brett Hall as two of the four Duluth players to score 30 or more goals in two seasons, the former Hobie Baker Award winner in the year 1994. Well, the new specialty teams would come into play, but who would have thought that in a tight game in the third period, well, someone would get a shorthanded goal. Through the stick of Steve Tuttle. It was on the far side post. Millamock, Baker, back tying up their respective Milwaukee Admirals foes here this evening. Chicago with 55 wins in the regular season. In the month of April, they were 8-1. and one. Earlier tonight, John Anderson, or earlier today, pardon me, Mike, John Anderson told us that his team is playing as smart as we've ever played. We haven't reached the pinnacle yet, but he didn't say as well as we've ever played. He said as smart. Sticked aside by Stephen Beauregard. Milwaukee trying to avoid going to the Bradley Center for the game three to be contested on Tuesday down in this best of seven series 0-2. Here's a two on one. C-Mac and Pearson towards C-Mac. Couldn't decide if he could take it on the forehand or the backhand. Rebound, score! C-Mac got it back to Pearson. It is 3-1 Chicago. has exploded here in the third period. 
Pearson with seven goals in five of his last seven games extending into the regular season. And Pearson will get the puck back and put it upstairs. Good defensive play here as C-Mac can't get the bouncing puck. The defenseman going down, but then watch Pearson on the other side of the net. It just comes across, and that's right upstairs underneath the bar. And Pearson has extended the Chicago's lead by one. They now lead it three to one. A nice two-goal cushion. He's a good face-off guy. Sokola, high shot. That's not the shot they want. Wide of the net also. Dueling. They'll look towards the point, and Jason Sokola waits. There's the one they're looking for. They score! The low shot on net. Beauregard feels he was interfered with, and the puck was kicked in. But nonetheless, as Beauregard is out of his mind right now in disgust, he's got a 10-minute misconduct. And pulled to within one, three, two, the score. 26, Beauregard has a misconduct. That will not be an unsportsmanlike, which would be a two-minute penalty. It's a, it's a misconduct. But uh, keep it, you have to keep in mind that near the end of the season, uh, the uh, Chicago Wolves were nailed with some pretty... Uh, well, I can see what happened right there. Well, Steve Martins came and brushed him across the... Or pardon me, Peterson came across. And actually, it's his own player. That's his own player that brushed him. It was Matt Martin who got pushed by Peterson. And uh, I think that's pretty much fair in love and war right there. Yeah, didn't look that bad from our angle here, Mike. Watch where the goaltender is, Borgard. He's out cutting down the angle, and so he's pretty much at the top of his crease, and he thought that Peterson's the one who pushed him. Actually, that's a very good play. He can get away with it, and Sapola brings him within one. But keep in mind, at the end of the season, Chicago, near the end of the season, they had a couple games where goals were allowed, where they felt, and even some video replay may have uh, supported that were allowed that really probably shouldn't have been. That is a kind of a sticking point with Chicago right now because it cost them the Huber Trophy or a chance at it, Long Beach winning it. And that cost a lot of the players on the team bonuses. So kind of a touchy situation there near the end of the season. And you can see why sometimes goals are just odd goals. Two of them. Let's drop the puck and get a goal. They do. Milwaukee trying to control. Martins quickly through his man and able to get the puck back into the neutral zone. Sapola pressured. Now Nelson gets it up to Peterson. Peterson across to Steve Tuttle. Tuttle across the line. Driven into the sideboards by Martin. 16 seconds now remains. Kevin Dahl brings it ahead. Martins just gets it to neutral ice. Milwaukee to the near side. Flipped in one last time. Five seconds to play. The horn will sound. Chicago with three goals in the third period takes a 2-0 series advantage lead. on Tuesday night at the Bradley Center. This is what playoff hockey is all about. A wise man once told me, Mike, it's not hockey. It's playoff hockey. <laughs> well, you'll see a lot of toughness in this series. Ten times in the regular season, Chicago came back after a deficit through two periods. They do it tonight and win their 12th straight game at home and 10th straight game overall and become a perfect 5-0 in the postseason. Nelson and Dahl will be able to continue their conversation in just a couple of days. These two teams play Tuesday and then again Thursday. Whether there's games after that, 
And there they've crossed out Crunchberries. Only two more captains left. Well, but I think the Milwaukee Admirals have something to say about that. And at the Bradley Center are pretty successful against Chicago. 41 shots for Chicago. 21 for Milwaukee. 3-2 last night. 3-2 tonight. Chicago, two victories away from the Western Conference Finals.